All right, good morning. Since since we're starting a couple minutes late here, I'll just let everybody have another minute to settle in or to head out if you're actually heading to a different session. Um, just to let everybody know, Views Demystified, this talk is really for people who aren't experts with views. So if you feel like you've used views a lot and you really understand views, then I really will not be insulted if you get up and choose to go to a different session. This is intended for people who are not experts with views. Are you going to start with explaining what it is? Yes. <laughs> yes. If you don't know what views are, you are in the right place because this is a key. Right. <laughs> views are key to, to Drupal. So, all right. Okay. Well, it looks like everyone's pretty much settled. So we will get started. I'm Rain Bria Michaels. I work with the Cherry Hill Company. We do a lot of work here. We're based in Los Angeles. We do a lot of work with libraries, mostly public libraries, also educational libraries, and we also work with nonprofits and NGOs. So a lot of what you'll hear me talk about in relation to how we philosophize things should be done um, are based on that type of client. So it is worth keeping in mind that some of you have commercial clients who are selling things. Some of you are working on your own sites. Uh, there's all kinds, some of you have user communities, there are all kinds of different sites out there with different needs. And so the way that you approach something might be slightly different from the way that we approach something. So something to just keep in mind. Um, Views Demystified is a talk that I've been giving since 2008. And Views has changed significantly over the years. Not conceptually, all of the changes that have happened, if you understand Views, you are able to move with the flow. So if you used Views in 2008, a lot of the ideas then are still relevant now and you can figure out those changes. However, if something I say doesn't really make sense, it could be that I'm actually talking about or using a term from an older version of Views. And so you can call me out on that. Um, don't hesitate to do that because that could happen. All right, so what are Views? Views are really the tool that you use to make Drupal do what you need it to do for you. So Drupal, uh, were any of you in Doug Van's um, epic course yesterday? Great. Um, so he probably talked a lot about nodes and how one of the amazing things about content um, in Drupal is that that content can really appear. The, the user only edits one piece of content. Maybe they enter an event once and then it shows up all over the site in various places, right? That's, that's really an amazing thing about any content management system, any kind of future-proofed system for the web, because content turns into these little blobs that can then be sent anywhere. Someday you'll be sending your content to um, you know, those uh, bus stops that have the digital displays. You know, you'll be sending your events there. You'll be sending your announcements to billboards. And they're little blobs of content. Well, views in Drupal are what makes it possible to take your nodes or your entities or anything that you've created in Drupal and actually have it show up as a little blob or piece that's relevant anywhere that you want it to display. So the way that I like to think of views is they're actually really simple. They seem very complicated. They are the thing that you need to know in order to make your Drupal sites shine. Knowing Drupal, or sorry, knowing views, you can do pretty much anything with Drupal. You are limited by your imagination, your budget, and how much time you have. Um, and I say your budget because your skill may not be able to do something, but if you have the money, I guarantee you that there are a lot of people at this camp right now who have the skill to do whatever you dream up with views. So they are the key to making your Drupal sites, sites shine. However, they look extremely complicated when you first get into them. And the reason why I started giving this talk in the first place was because my first foray into views was kind of painful. It was a nightmare. I couldn't figure out what was what. I was extremely lost. And at the time, there were no kind of simple for beginners um, lessons or slideshows or anything out there that could get you started in views, nothing. And then O'Reilly uh, published the book that WebCheck contributed to using Drupal, which I hope all of you have heard of. If you haven't heard of it, um, put it on your list. It's incredible. 
It's been updated over the years. It really will get you going if you're new to Drupal. Um, and she outlined some very specific tasks in views that were very simple. And it, all of a sudden, it all made sense. And I said, you know what? This is what I needed. This is what a lot of people need. They don't necessarily have time to look at this book. So I'm going to start giving this a used demystified talk. So what are they? Views are simply lists of content. And if you can distill down to that, then they won't be quite so scary anymore. Views are a way to list content. Maybe you're only listing one piece of content. That's a legitimate uh, interpretation and an, a legitimate use of, of a view. For example, I want my company's most recent tweet to display on my homepage. That's one piece of content. It's a view and it's a list. It says, most recent piece of content from Twitter from me. And that's what it is. All of the other aspects of views are just about making those lists show exactly what you want them to show. So what can views do? And we're actually going to go through this list here rather than, than show it to you um, So and not on the slide. So what can views do? Views can do a lot of amazing things. Views can replace the front page content on your site with something else. So this is a very simple example. We have a, a product for very small public libraries called Library Site. Very simple product. And what you're seeing here, you, you can all kind of think of that um, River of News front page that Drupal comes with out of the box. Not incredibly useful unless you're a blogger, right? That's really the only thing it's good for. Well, what you can do is you can start building the views that actually are meaningful for the front page of your site. And there's two views on this page. And um, to identify those two views, one is the slideshow at the top. That's a view of a specific type of content displayed a specific way. And then the upcoming events list in the middle. So that's another view. So that's one amazing thing that views can do, which is significantly better than river of news, which isn't really that useful. All right. All right, so another thing that views can do, views can replace taxonomy displays. Now, I realize that some of you may be very beginner and may not really know what taxonomy is. It is one of the more, it is also one of the more powerful aspects of Drupal, and it is probably one of the most difficult to explain. This session is not going to explain taxonomy. However, oh, hopefully there are other sessions, and I know that there's a lot of good material out there. Um, so, just thinking about um, what that means, on any kind of blog you've got these tags, right, where you have some kind of a topic that a user might be able to go to. This is coming from your taxonomy. So if I click on that tag, I get this list, and it's really not very well defined. It's also not that useful. It might be useful if you're a blogger, this is fine, but this is out of the box, it's not that great. So you can actually use views to override what this looks like and do something much more sophisticated. So here's an example from a recent site uh, that, that we launched for a library, which is also a taxonomy view. It's, it's exactly the same as clicking the word sample here. You see the word sample at the top and then you have um, just lists of content. But when we go over here, we have this nice description from the taxonomy term. It belongs to that entity that is the taxonomy term. You can actually sort by audience. I know I made this really small so that you could see more of what's going on here, but this is actually not audience, sorry, it's resource type because we're already sorted into an audience. So, and then it lists out these, these items that fit that term. So that's another really nice thing that views can do for you uh, with a little bit of, of skill. Views can give you a nice list of attendees or uh, users on your site. So this is one example from the Drupal Camp LA site. Um, you know, we also have, I was going to show you chilco.com and I forgot to pull that up. So let me pull that up really quickly. This is our company. Um, this is also a list of users right here, our team. This is just a nice little list of users. You can do this in other ways too, where you start to show activity things like that. So um, that's something that you can do. You can list specific types of content. We talked about the slideshow on the library site page. We talked about the uh, list of events that was there. You can provide RSS feeds or other types of feeds if you're not using RSS. RSS is just one of those mainstays 
that's been very helpful to people for a long time. So this is coming out of a view. It's an RSS feed. It's incredibly easy to set up, and I'll be showing that today. So if you don't know how to create RSS feeds, you'll be able to do that today. Uh, the other really great thing that views can do for you is help your administration inter interface significantly. So a couple of the, of the things that I want to show you very quickly for that, and we're going to go into more detail with this soon, is um, on this particular site, I want to show you the difference between, for example, the content view, the list of content view here, and on the uh, basic site here, if we go to content, and list all of the content. So notice the difference between the view. Obviously, one of them has a whole lot more content, but all you can do here is you can, you can do your update actions, your kind of default stuff that comes out of Drupal when you install it. Um, you can sort of sort things a little bit. You can sort by what's published or what's sticky. You can sort by content type, and that's really all that you can do out of the box. But because there are some great modules out there that will allow you to add some ability to your administration interface, you can actually gain complete control over those views and make them do for you whatever you want. So for example, look at all of these sort options I have. I can choose content by author here. I can choose content by who's tagged, you know, if it's teen content versus, versus kids content. Um, I can fill in multiple fields here and say I only want to see content from this particular user that's teen content. Really, really helpful. Um, and then you'll also notice that the operations are a little bit more extensive. There are more things that I can change on this. So this is another great thing that views can do, and, and I'll show you how to do that. It's very easy, incredibly, kind of stupidly easy, which is nice. All right, so let's actually take a look at views. And um, I have both Drupal, um, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 open here, so hopefully we have enough time to look at both, although really, um, Actually, I did want to delete that. So really, the um, the differences are so minor that whatever we talk about today carries over into Drupal 8 as well. Um, OK, so the first thing about views is in Drupal 7, which more likely than not all of you are using right now because Drupal 8 is not production ready. There isn't a beta out for it yet. So for now, Drupal 7 is the production environment. Soon, hopefully, Drupal 8 will be. Um, when we get to Drupal 8, you don't need to find the, the views module and download it. But in Drupal 7, you do. So you will go to drupal.org. Oops, not com. Um, project and views. So you'll go to drupal.org, you'll find views, you'll grab the module, you'll put it into your modules directory for your site. If you're multi-site, it'll be a specific site name. And if you're single site, it'll probably be in sites all in that in that area. Um, and there's a lot of good information about installing Drupal that's out there. Or you can talk to the help desk as well if you're not sure where modules would go. Um, so you'll come and you'll find the module. Whenever you're pulling a module, if you're really a beginner, if, you know, if you're not really a beginner and you're just here to humor me, which is great. Um, but if you're really a beginner and you're pulling a module, make sure that you pull one that's in the green category here. Um, if you're not a beginner, there may be reasons to actually go on to one of these other categories. But stay, stick with the green if you're a beginner. All right, so once you have it and you have it in the right place, then it'll be in your modules. It'll be available to you if you go into your administration interface and go into modules. And it'll be down here at the very, very bottom. And I already have views enabled. But you'll check off views. And this is really important. You'll also check off views UI. Unless you're really advanced, in which case, again, thank you for humoring me and being here. But you will need views UI in order to build your views. Uh, and it's views UI is one of those modules that you'll sometimes turn off on production sites or if you inherit a site from someone else. Views UI may be turned off while it's in production, meaning while it's live to the public, because it is a resource heavy module. So if you're ever going to look at a site that maybe you inherited and you can't figure out why you can't get to the views, it doesn't mean that views isn't running on the site. I guarantee you that unless it's the most simple Drupal site in the world or it's doing something really 
really unique with Drupal, it's using views. It's probably because views UI is turned off. Um, so you'll just want to make sure that that's enabled as well. Once both of those are enabled, now you'll be able to get to views under the structure section of your site. So where you have blocks and menus, taxonomy, and views are there as well. And Drupal 8 is the same way. Under the structure menu, views will show up. Now Drupal 8 is great because views was put into core. So all you need to do for Drupal 8 is just make sure that views is enabled. You don't need to actually go find it. It's part of core and it's wonderful. Makes us very happy. All right, so when you want to create a new view, um, and I have a couple of demo views available here already that we're going to look at a little bit later, but I just want to kind of go through the view interface with you, the views interface with you, because that's really the core of, of understanding how views work. Um, so when you come to the views page, you'll see all the views that are enabled, and those will be the ones that are dark. The ones that are kind of grayed out, these are views that are disabled. And in <laughs> Drupal 8, some of them are actually views that are running the defaults because Drupal 8 gives you a little bit more control over the default settings. So you could actually um, enable them and then start controlling your defaults. And that's a little bit true with Drupal 7 as well. So um, for example, the taxonomy term view is one of those that if you enable that view and you start playing with how those look, you'll actually start changing how the taxonomy term pages look. So that's kind of neat. Uh, but these are all disabled views that just exist. They come with core. Sometimes they come with some modules that you install. For example, the calendar module. At some point, all of you are going to be faced with somebody wanting a calendar on their site. And um, make sure you budget for that because that's going to be a little bit more complex than you think it is. Not in terms of setting up the view, it's everything else around calendars that's more complex, but that will come, the module itself comes with views that are going to be disabled or in a template and you'll want to enable them, activate them, and make them available to you. So that's how you know what's available and what isn't. If you're really learning, you're playing with a site that's not a production site, please don't do this on a production site because you could actually mess something up. But if you're learning, you want to play, you want to kind of see how a view is built and mess with it and change it, one of the most fun things that you can do when you're starting out is in this little drop down where it says edit, there's a clone option. So you can clone the view, and then when, when you make that clone, it'll take all of the settings from the view that you've just cloned, and then you can go in and start to edit those settings and see what happens and how the view actually changes. So that's kind of neat as well. All right, so if you're adding a new view, you'll just click Add New View, and then you get this nice, simple interface. Now, did any of you ever play with views in Drupal 6 or um, an older version of you, the views? If you did raise a little bit. OK, now, um, if you did, you'll probably remember that when you said Add a New View, you immediately went into the complex interface that we're about to see. You didn't see this nice, simple, little clean interface that gets you started, which is really kind of cool. I, I like that they did this um, because it gets you started on the view. You get a couple steps going. You can kind of save it, think about it, and then come back to it later and start to do the more advanced stuff. Nice and helpful. It also highlights for you that some of the most important things that you need to do when you're setting up a view. So the first very important thing, and really I believe the only required thing on this form, yes, is the view name. You do need to have a name for your view and it should be descriptive. This is not a name that is ever going to show up anywhere for the end user. This is a name that's going to show up for the people who might have to work with the view. So make it useful to you. And someday you're going to have a site with about 40 views on it at least. Um, you know, we have sites, we probably have sites with, I don't, I don't want to guess how many views, it'd be a scary number. And you're going to want to do command find or control, control F or command F, whether you're Windows or Mac, and search for something to, to find your view quickly because you're not going to want to scroll through that list. Please, please use the name. Um, this, this is very important. A name that you will actually remember so that you can find that view in three years when your client comes back to you and says, hey, I forgot that I should probably be doing security updates. And then one of those security updates messes up one of your views. 
it will happen. I promise you, if you stick with Drupal, if you continue doing this, it will happen. All right, so you'll name your view. You'll come up with a name that's really good, um, and you'll spell things correctly. <laughs> and, uh, and then it'll give you what's called a machine name. Now, the difference between a machine name and a human readable name is a very important difference in Drupal. It's something that you'll want to know with your blocks, uh, with pretty much everything that you have throughout your site, especially if you're getting into web forms. There's machine names for web forms. The machine name will not have any spaces in it, so you'll notice that it gave me a machine name that has underscores. And this is something that the database is going to use. It's something that you're going to use if you use tokens on your site, if you get into more advanced development or theming or functions or whatever you start to do, the machine name is going to become important. The human readable name can be whatever you want. You can change your machine name if it's something that's kind of unwieldy. So if you need a human readable name that says Drupal Camp demo video from Drupal De from Views Demystified presentation, um, that's perfectly fine. You can do that for the human readable name, but don't let that be your machine name. Go ahead and edit that machine name, make it more usable, because someday you're going to be really advanced and you're going to be playing with your theme and you're going to be writing all kinds of awesome modules and the machine name of your view is going to matter. Um, all right. You can also give it a description or not, depends on really what you need to do and what you put in there. Uh, I'm a big fan of using as little text as possible, but making sure that it's the necessary text that you need. All right, now you're making some really important decisions about this view. And the first decision that you're making is what type of view am I creating? From here, this, this decision is irreversible. If you make the wrong decision here, you can't change it later. However, pretty much any other decision that you make can be changed later. So you don't really need to worry about this. But this one you do need to think about. So you're choosing, let me uh, get out of this so that I can zoom in here and you can actually see what these options are. Uh, so Drupal, in, well, actually it's not really a difference between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. It's more of a difference between the version of, of views that we're talking about. But the language has changed a little bit over time in terms of what type of, of a view that you're creating. There are two different things. There are views and then there are displays within views. An RSS feed or a page or a block that's going to show up somewhere, those are displays inside of your view. Your view is kind of a big container that says, okay, this particular view is going to deal with events or this particular view is going to deal with all of the users on our site who are um, subscribed to our premium resources. So you might have a user role for premium resources subscribers. You want a view that's gonna deal with whatever lists you need of those subscribers. So you're making a choice right there. What type of view is this? Is this a view of content? So if it's a list, if it's a view that's dealing with events, events are going to be content. If it's a view that's dealing with articles, those are like blog posts, that's going to be content. If it's a view that's dealing with users on your site, you really want to be careful and make sure that you choose users. And if it's a view that's dealing with files that are being uploaded to the site, these could be attachments, these could be files through the entity system, then you're going to want to make sure that you choose files. Sometimes you might actually choose content for this particular one, but that's going to be a more advanced use case. There's all, there are always exceptions to every rule. Everything I'm saying today, there's, there's, that, it's no different there. There will always be exceptions to every rule. Taxonomy terms. If it's a view, let's say, uh, you know, with our library sites, for example, we have audience as a, a vocabulary. And in the audience, there's a list, which is children, teens, adults. Some libraries, we even have babies. So, uh, so those are taxonomy terms. And all of the content gets classified as, is this content for children, teens, or adults, or maybe for multiple? So that's a taxonomy term. If I'm dealing with something that's going to be giving you a lot of information just from content from those items, so 
let me uh, let me go to an example here. Um, let's go to premium research resources. And okay, so so these are taxonomy terms. This is a taxonomy view right here. These are resources that have been classified as being related to specific subjects. The subjects the subject is a vocabulary, and then the items here are the taxonomy terms. And if you click on any one of these, then you're going to end up with a list of all of the resources that use that taxonomy term. So this is a taxonomy view, not a content view. I hope that makes sense. That's probably one, the only confusing thing, hopefully, that I'm going to say today. Um, but it is one of the more confusing aspects of this. So this would be a taxonomy view. Yes? You're making that decision up front when you create the view. Uh -huh. So you're saying this is the kind of view that I need to have. So in this case, because it's a list, it's really, it's ultimately what this view is, is a list of taxonomy terms that then links to everything that fits within that taxonomy term. Um, so that's how you know this is a taxonomy view. Because it's not just listing out articles or, or content. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you could. Uh, you will end up with some weird errors from time to time, such as stuff displaying multiple times, uh, even if you're trying to do distinct query settings, which I'm going to show you how to do as well, um, in terms of making sure that your results are distinct. So you might end up with duplicates in the row, uh, or you might just not quite end up with the results that you want. But there are ways to do it, and sometimes it will be what you choose to do. That's going to be more advanced. Um, so if you know if you're just getting started, try to stick with as simple as possible, and, and otherwise you, you'll hate views. I love views, um, and I want you all to love views as well. So start simple and then build on that. But yes, as as I said a moment ago, every rule can be broken, and you know sometimes you have users that also have taxonomy applied to them. So maybe you would do a user view using taxonomy, not users. It can get kind of messy, but. <laughs> Um, but yes, you might you might do that. Um, so, but this this right here, this is the decision that you're going to make. That's going to be irreversible. If you make the wrong one, you will need to rebuild the view for what you're trying to do. And if you're learning, that's fine. You'll you'll just get started. You'll you'll learn more every time you do it. So you'll make that choice of what type of view that you're use that you're creating, and then from there, you have all kinds of other choices that you can make. This is a this is an out of the box install of Drupal, so I only have two content types on here right now. I have article and basic page. Do I want to show all content, or do I want to just show articles or basic pages? Again, I can change this decision later. For now, I'll say I just want to show articles. I can also choose to show articles that are only tagged with the word sample. In this case, every article that I've added to this list is tagged with the word sample, so this would bring up all of the content. And then I can choose a default sort order if I already kind of know what I'm going to be doing. There are a lot more sort options that you have later on. So I'll just start with newest first, which tends to be the, the standard that people use. Now I have a couple options here. I have create a page and create a block. And in the create a page option, notice there's a link right here that says include an RSS feed. It really is that easy. I love that. Um, oh, of course, you might want to adjust your RSS feed, but this is it, it's that easy. Um, all right, so you, you can give it a URL here. This is also one of the areas that people get tripped up, so I want to highlight this. When you choose the URL for your view, keep in mind that if another view uses the same URL on a page display, these are displays that we're creating right now, the page and the block and the feed display. So if you, if you choose a URL that another view is already using on a display or another display in the same view is using, there will be a conflict. And you will not know which view is being pulled up when you go to that URL. So if you start trying to edit a view and nothing is changing, and you know that it's not caches that's causing your, your changes to not display, it could be that you actually have a conflicting display with a matching URL. Also, 
Drupal has the awesome, um, did, did Doug Van talk about the um, clean URLs, setting, setting clean URLs and redirects in Drupal? Okay, no? So, so clean URLs, um, Drupal has this great ability for you to set clean URLs on your site and you can also create URLs automatically and you can automatically create redirects. And those, that does involve a number of additional modules, but it can work really well, yes? Not here, not here. Yeah. So, so if there's already a URL to a page on your site, an alias to a page that you've created on your site, it won't check. It will check that when you're creating nodes. It's incredibly skilled. Drupal is incredibly talented at checking that when you're creating nodes. It won't check it here. At this point, you can give this any URL you want, and it won't know if that URL already exists. So that's something to be careful of when you're creating your your page display. You had a question. There's no difference when you're doing the uh, when when you're doing this work in production versus when you're doing it on a local site or a dev site um, because they all basically operate the same way as long as the sites match and you always want your development environment whether it's local or dev you want it to match production. However, there are great ways. There's a features presentation later today. Um, please go to that because that presentation will show you how to edit. Uh, I, well, actually, I don't know exactly what they're going to be talking about features can do a lot of different things but one of the things that features is amazing for is doing your configuration work locally like creating a view or changing a view locally and then pushing it to production without having to do the work on production which is incredibly dangerous oh right because i'm running this locally So it, views are configuration, it's configuration work. So typically you would do it on the site itself. If you're a beginner, you're probably, you may only be working with a production site. You may not be working with features as a way to push your code or push your configuration changes through code to your production environment. So what you would do in that case is if you're, you know, if you're really beginner is you would first try everything out on your local environment and then you would go and redo it on your production environment, but try it out first. If you're going to use features, I'll get to you in a second. If, you, if you're going to use features, then you would package it up nicely. You would do it on your local environment, you'd package it up, and then you'd push that code to your production environment and then update the feature, and it'll make those changes for you automatically. Drupal 8 has an entirely different way of dealing with configuration and moving it from production from local to production. Um, yes, you had a... I was just going to point out what might answer the question. The first part of that path there, you notice that in the path in the top there, you don't fill that in. You just fill in the, the end there that says Google Camp Demo View. The front part of that, which is what will change with your production URL, is, is automatically entered based on where your site is yeah. from. Thank you. That was that, that was very helpful clarification. So this part, uh, you notice I can't even edit it. This is what's coming from the URL, and it has that strange URL with the 8888 because I'm using MAMP to run this locally, and MAMP defaults to the port 8888. So that that's what you're seeing there. That's just a local version of the site running on my machine. No, no, you're only editing the relative path at the end here, the alias. Yes. No, so the question was, would it prevent something later on if you create a, an alias here that for your view, will it prevent somebody later on from having their article or something create a, um, a matching URL? And no, it won't because it's not checking the displays and views. It's only checking the aliases, the official aliases that exist through the, the Drupal interface. So, um, so that is important to keep in mind. Now, typically your views pages are going to be landing pages and you don't want people using those URLs anyway. And the other, the other thing to consider is that it is very easy for you to force articles or, or something like that to have very specific URLs. And usually you want them to have very specific paths because you want, you want it to be clear this is a blog post, this is an article, this is an announcement, and that'll be in the path. So you'll force those rather than let people just create them. So that, that is a little bit of protection. <laughs> Typically, the people who are going to be able to do this are going to be fairly high level. 
Um, all right, so you're going to have a nice path that's going to be useful. We'll just call this demo view. It'll be something something useful. And then that will be the page, that will be the URL that people get to to land on this display. So, um, so then you're going to choose how is this going to display? You have some options. Is it going to display as a table? Is it going to display as an unformatted list? Or you know, you'll, you'll want to play with these options on your own. Unformatted list is probably what you're going to use 99% of the time. And then you're going to decide, do I want to see teasers? This is a display mode that your, your uh, content types come with. You can add other, con other display modes as well. Um, do you want it to show just titles? Do you want it to show the whole post? Or do you want to play with the fields yourself? And that's where things get really fun, is when you play with the fields yourself. So we're actually going to choose that one. Notice all of my other options went away at that point, because now I have to customize this view entirely. You'll say how many you want displayed on a page, if you want a pager, if you want to automatically create a menu link, we'll go ahead and do that. So I want this in the main menu. Um, we'll take out the word Drupalcamp because we know where we are. And then if you want to have an RSS feed right away, you can also create this later when you're doing the advanced work. It's always a good idea for your RSS feeds URL to basically match the URL of your view, but you'll want it to end with either .xml or .rss so that they match. That, that's usually a good idea. And for your RSS feeds, I suggest you just stick with content for your row style because that'll make your life a lot easier. Then you can also create a block and then your block can be placed. So in, in the um, intro Drupal, you probably went through a lot with blocks. You know how to place them, where to put them. So you can create a block and then you can place that and you can make it display however you want. The homepage that I showed you for library site, both the slideshow at the top and the events thing, those were both blocks. All right, so from there you can save and exit and go straight to the view, or you can continue and edit. I'm going to save and exit, and we're, uh, we are actually really running out of time here, so I know we got started a little bit late, session before us ran a little late, so um, we'll, I'll try to leave enough room for questions and get somewhere. So, all right, so this is what I get by default. I get a list of titles because that's the only field that was there by default. Now, remember that I said fields was the display style that I wanted, and that's going to mean that I'm going to have to set up everything that's going to be in there. So I have these, I have these options. Um, this is what I see by default. It's at the path that I wanted and it's in the menu. And by the way, I should have given a disclaimer at the beginning of this that usually this is a two hour talk. <laughs> so this is really just getting you in, um, in initially. All right. So from here, you can then edit the view. Notice I'm using the little gear from contextual links. This will only be available to you if the contextual links module is turned on, which is a core module. So when you install Drupal out of the box, it will be there, but it usually isn't turned on by default. You'll need to do that. So I can click on it and I can edit the view. And now you'll see that my interface looks a lot different from that initial interface. There's a lot more options and we need to kind of go through these as quickly as possible. And then I'll show you some other fun things really quickly, and then we can leave time for questions. All right, so the first thing that you have here is the title. Oh, sorry, let's back up here. The first thing that you have up here are the displays that are created. So I mentioned there's the view. That's kind of the big bucket, and you want everything to kind of be similar in that one view. And then there's the displays. There's page and there's feed right now because when I started out, I created a page display, and I told it I wanted a feed display. I can go in here and I can start adding new displays. I can add a block. I can add another page. And there are reasons to do this. You might add multiple pages that do slightly different things. Um, I, can, and I can add an attachment. Attachments are very fun because what they can do is put something at the top or at the bottom of your view that might be related or might be completely different. And, uh, and that's actually not how we're setting up the, um, I had that one page that I showed you, I'm not going to take time to navigate to it right now, but where we had the children's resources and we had the taxonomy description at the top of the page and then we had all the things that were within that. That's not how we're doing that, but that is one way to do that.
is an option. There are multiple ways to do everything, so uh, something to keep in mind as well. So these are your displays. You can have multiple displays, and within those, you have all of the details. So your, your displays can have names. If you're having, if you're going to have multiple pages, make sure that you're display that you're creating pages that have relevant names. So if one page is articles for for the teen audience, you would call it teen articles. If one is for articles for the children audience, you would call it children articles. Things that make sense to you because when you go back in three years, you're not going to remember the decisions that you made today unless they're clearly spelled out. And then you can set the title. This is visible to the public unless you theme it not to be. So this is something, this isn't the crazy long title that you give it, that you give your view in order to know, okay, this is actually the view that I need to work on. This is the title that you want the public to see on the page or on the block. And then you can change the formatting that you're using for your view here. So we started with unformatted list, but let's say table were a better option. Hopefully you're not needing to make that choice that often, but you might. So you could choose table here and then you're actually changing the display. When you make those changes, you're going to get a preview down below of what you did, so you can kind of monitor what's going on as you're working. You can also change what you're showing, whether you're showing fields or you can go back to content so that more stuff displays. This is where the real power lies here, is fields. And this is where you get to say, okay, this is exactly what I want displayed. Let's say all I want are the images from these articles. I don't want the titles. I basically just want this to be a gallery of images from articles. So what I can do here is click this Add button. Let me click that again because I think I did that fairly quickly. I want to make sure that we get through this. Um, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Hopefully you can still see well enough. I'm going to click Add. And then I'm going to choose, I'm going to search for image because I know that's the name of the field that I created or that came out of the box. In this case, this is an out of the box field. There's images in the article content type. So I can see that. I'm going to check that off and say, okay, I want this. I'm going to apply it to all displays. This is important that I'm making that choice. Now I have some more options. I can create a label for this field. If it's a gallery of images, I probably don't want a label, right? I just want, I don't want image and then the picture, image, picture, image, picture, right? I just want the picture. So I'm going to uncheck that and not display the label. Um, I want the image. I probably don't want it to be an enormous image. I probably, if this is a gallery, I probably want to use a thumbnail or a medium. So I can say how I want it to look. And then I can actually be nice and have the image link to the article right from here. These are very easy choices. Then there's all these more advanced choices. And some of these are great. This, uh, this isn't really relevant for an image field, but if it were a text field, I could, for example, turn it into a header two for this particular field. Very useful because now you can do semantic markup with almost no work on your view, which is great. And that's how we get things like, let me check on one of these, things like this, where you have, these are, I believe we have these as header twos. So each of these is a header two. So if a screen reader is going through this, that's very helpful to the screen reader because it's marked up as a header two. It's given semantic, semantic information. These links here, notice they have a different look from the text that's above them, and they're displaying in line. That can be done by creating a CSS class that you use to create special styling on a link. So you know, I have a class that is pretty much on every site that I've ever built that's read more, that I use for read more links. If the field is a read more link, I put that class on it, and then when I put the read more rules into my style sheet, it just goes onto every view that I have that has the, the read more link and styles all of those links to look exactly like how the client says those read more links are supposed to look. It's perfect. Very easy. Where, where is your style sheet? Um, your style sheet's going to be in your theme. Yeah. Uh, so you can also change the label HTML. I mean, you have a lot of power here. This is for you to play with on your own. Definitely come in here and just play and have fun. You can also say what happens if there's no results. Uh, for example, one of the sites that I wanted to have time to show you, but I'm not going to, would be uh, 
for uh, CA Votes, which is part of the League of Women Voters of California, and they have these ballot measures listed. Well, while they were setting up the ballot measures, they wanted people to know that they were working on the ballot measures, but they didn't have them ready yet. So what we had here instead as no results behavior while we waited was we are working on the ballot measures and they will be up at this date and time helpful for people. And then the second they started putting up ballot measures, they didn't have to go back here and fix this. It just automatically put the ballot measures in there and boom, they didn't have to do anything. They just put their ballot measures into the site and it was all there. Nice, quick, easy, very helpful. And all that's needed to make that happen is to work with your no results behavior. Sometimes you don't want a view to display at all if you don't have any results. So then you would indicate that as well, which is hide as empty and then you can save that. So a lot of power here in setting up your field. And that's, that's just your field right there and all the settings for your field. So I just made that change and I think I forgot to set the, um, oh, because I said cancel, I didn't save those changes that I made. So notice the labels displaying and it's big. And so it's good. It's always good when you're demoing and you make a little mistake because then people can see what would happen um, the wrong way. The other thing that I really want to highlight here is all changes are stored temporarily. The work you do in your views does not save until you press this save button here. And that's a mistake that you will make. Believe me. <laughs> um, so you need to make sure that you press that save button. All right, so again, we're very low on time here and there's so much more that I really wanted to show you. So. Um, Filter and sort are the other really key parameters for how you're going to work with your views and things that you need to know about. Um, everything else you can play with, including advanced. And, um, and you know, if you have questions, I have cards. If you want to, you know, send me an email at some point and say, hey, I was working with views and I know you mentioned this thing and I, we obviously didn't get to it, then um, feel free to email me and I'll, I'll be happy to answer. So, um, Filter and sort, however, so sort criteria is the order that's, that your content is going to display. And this is a key one for you because you may not want newest first. Maybe it's events and you want the next upcoming event to show first. Maybe you want the thing that was updated most recently to show first. This happens sometimes. So there could be a reason why you want the most recently updated content as opposed to the most recently posted content to display first. So this is where you set those parameters. In the intro classes that happened yesterday, you probably learned about sticky at top of lists. I strongly recommend that you make sure that that's in your sort criteria because if it's available to the user, at some point they'll try to use it and they'll wonder why it doesn't work. So I'm just adding a sort parameter here and I'm saying I want it to be sticky. I just searched for STI to jump to sticky so that I didn't have to scroll down and look for the word sticky. So I can apply that to the display. I can say this is the trick here. If you're using sticky as a sort, it needs to be sort descending, not ascending. So I'll apply that. And now I can rearrange the sort order so that sticky comes before post date so that it's the first parameter so that sticky items can show up at the top. If post date is the first parameter, then sticky is not going to be that relevant anymore. So I'll choose rearrange and then I can just drag sticky up, apply it, and now that change has been made and that's in there. And then filter criteria is going to determine what content actually displays in your view. So if it's an article, if it's content that's been tagged with sample as we have here. It's if it's content that's 14s, if it's content that's been published in the last two days, if it's whatever it is that, that you want, this is where you're going to have, have that added. One other really important thing for me to show you before we go into the question and answer period here is defaults versus overrides. So notice that you may have multiple displays in your, um, in your view. Some of those displays are going to need to have different parameters than other displays. And so what you're going to want is make sure that those other displays override the default parameters. The first view that you set up, the first display that you set up, those are going to be your defaults. So if I want to override something, 
Notice if I click on, say, content published here, content published, yes, if I click on that, I have an option here. I can say that I either want to have it over, or I either want to have this apply to all displays, or I want it to apply to this display and override. And um, I'm going to cancel this here. And I'm just going to show you really quickly that notice nothing is um, italicized. Everything's normal. If I override something, so now if I click on this and I make a change and I want to say publish no, apply to this display, the item that's been overridden, which is my filter criteria, is now in italics. So that's how you visually know if something's been overridden or not. Really important piece. And that's really all that we have time for. So I'm going to open this up to questions, even though there's a million more things that I wanted to show you. And I see the hand raised back there. Yes. Um, I was wondering about, I noticed you have some of the views as like administration pages, like you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Specify by choosing the admin theme versus the. Right. Okay, so those, so the list that I just put up here, these lists of modules, these are very helpful modules for you. And this is directly in relation to the question that was just asked, which was how do you determine whether it's an administration view or uh, a, a normal view that's in the display and how do you determine which theme it's in. So uh, if you're using an admin theme, then anything under the admin URL is probably going to display in, in your admin theme. So that's one way that you can do it is if you're creating a special view and you want it in the admin theme, then just make sure that it's under admin in the path. So you would do your path would be admin slash whatever that view needs to be which you really want to do anyway if you're doing admin stuff because you want to make sure that semantically it's clear that this is administration versus public. Uh, so the other piece to that is those displays that I was showing you, those are very easy for you to set up. Uh, so even though we didn't get to show setting them up, you will be able to do it on your own. Views, bulk operations, and administration views are the two modules that you want to really help with your admin interface and views, and those are what are going to enable you to actually modify those views and do whatever you want with them and do bulk operations in your views. A couple of other really great modules, draggable views gives you a way to give your end user, not your end end user, but your content manager, a way to control the order of the content that a view displays. So that is actually a sort order option, draggable views. Read the help text on that because that'll tell you how to set it up. Accordion view is a great way to get a, a view of, you know, you have the title. This is a good way to do an FAQ. You have the FAQ question. You click on it. It expands it. You click on another one. It expands it, collapses the other one. That's an accordion view. Really easy to set up with the accordion view module. View slideshow plus the flex slider module is how we're doing the slideshow that's on library site, how we do a lot of our slideshows. It's not the be all and end all of slideshows, but it is a good option and uh, with Flex Slider, it is nicely responsive. And um, Calendar with the Date module is what you're going to use if you need to display content in a calendar. And um, that by itself is a, it probably could be its own session for sure. So any, uh, any questions? Any other questions? Yes? Okay, so the question was in terms of chronological order of setting things up. You're setting up your content types, your taxonomy, your users, your whatever else you might be setting up. Is it fair to say that views would be at the end of that chain? And um, it's a bit of a chicken and egg question uh, because, yes, you will. If you're going to set up your view, you probably do need all of the other parameters that go into that view in place. So you probably will need your content types, your your fields, everything that's relevant to that view. You will need it in place in order to set up the view itself. However, there is kind of an ongoing process that's going to happen where it might happen that you start creating your view and you realize that you need something else in your content type. So you might go back and forth a little bit as you're, as you're massaging that. And that's all stuff that you want to really figure out as much as you can during the discovery phase of a project and find out what really needs to go in there so that when you're building it, you just go in and you can build everything. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thanks for hanging out a little bit late.
I just think of views as making a bunch of pages and then stringing them all together on my website in okay. a particular way. Is that a reasonable way to think about it? Um, they're they're much more powerful than that. So you can you can use views to create blocks and 